Hi there, I'm David Bacon, a customer success engineer here at Algolia, and today I'll be showing you our query categorization feature. Query categorization, or QCAT as you'll hear me call it, is built into the Algolia dashboard and predicts the categories to which a search query belongs, thereby connecting your customers to the most relevant category or selections of items and ultimately helping them find what they need faster. Let's get stuck in. So really my role here today is to demonstrate the ways in which QCAT excels in handling uh, different types of queries, a quick tour through that part of the dashboard, and I'm also going to share some examples of the way in which you can represent or present this on your front end in our Shiny demo store. But before getting into any of that um, Shiny stuff, I'm going to be uh, warming you up by taking you through this dashboard here from each tab from left to right. We're, I'm just giving you a kind of brief overview as to what all these things represent. And after which you will all be QCAT experts and, and gurus yourselves. Okay, so to start with, we have the Predictions Explorer on our left here. This is the part of the dashboard where you can see which queries have a generated um, category prediction. So merely just clicking in the search bar, you'll see some queries come up. You can also start typing to find others. Taking a look closer at one, let's go into iPhone case here. Now let's put our eyes over to the right. We will find here that the QCAT model has a certain confidence level that the iPhone case query will belong to the basic cases category under cases and cell phones. And because of that fact, because it's certain and the way we've configured it, the results will be filtered down to that category. So what this is really saying here is that based on user behavior on your site, most users who are typing in iPhone case are clicking and converting on products from that category. To reiterate, the, the user behavior is collected in the form of events, which is then fed into the QCAT model. This may not be the only time you hear this today, but sending all your click, event, uh, click event, conversion events is really crucial to getting those QCAT model predictions. Let's just try this in our kind of normal dashboard. So let's type in iPhone case as a query. You will see that QCAT is working. It's automatically filtering and boostering on this query with this category here. Let's take a step back to the QCAT dashboard now uh, and move on to the categories tree. Okay, because in our demo, the, um, the, the, the model is already trained, you can see here that it's already generated a category tree, which you can examine yourself. And this is where you can check and confirm that the categories tree has been correctly generated. Here, you can also exclude some categories from query cat predictions. So you can see here we've excluded the arts under the calendars under the, uh, the books category. Based on your business use case, you can also think about excluding categories like Black Friday or on sale, which are not technically kind of categories per se. Moving on to the category setting, settings tab. So this has three parts here. The first part is the index classification. So this is showing you, this is the facet that you've selected which best represents your categories and the one that which QCAT is trained on. And you can see here, we've trained this on four levels of hierarchical categories. The second part here says categories with search API include category predictions in all search API responses. Now, I realize that may sound, may have some kind of technical jargon here, but what I want you to do is just bank that because we're actually gonna talk about that when we get to our shiny demo. So I will refer back to that later. The third part is the event source index. This is the index where all the events are being sent to. Okay, moving on. So with the next tab here, we're getting a little bit shinier here uh, because we're actually seeing the products in our simulator preview. This setting hit, this sort of tab here is a really fast and clear way to see the difference that auto boosting and filtering makes. The eagle eyed amongst you will notice that uh, dynamic re-ranking or as we say, DRR, we love an acronym at Algolia. You can see that dynamic re-ranking is set here. And if you don't know what it is, it's essentially an AI feature which uh, pins products to the top of result sets for queries that, are, that um, are based on click and conversion events for that query. So essentially really promoting popular products. So 
even though the focus of this demo is on QCAT, um, it's important to note that the AI features uh, at Algolia work in harmony here as part of a kind of bigger Algolia AI search product. So we're going to type in the query iPhone here. And we're going to see DRR applied. On the left-hand side, you'll see that auto filtering and boosting is disabled. But on the right-hand side, you will see that it is enabled. And you will probably also notice, if you're familiar with DRR, that the first seven hits are pinned here. But as we go further down the list, you will see that QCAT really starts to shape, on the right-hand side, the, the result set after the first seven. Um, this is where the auto filtering uh, is enabled, and this is where it is disabled. And so you can see there's some kind of products here that are not particularly actual iPhone products, but on the on the right hand side, these are products, iPhones products, which are included and belong to the cell phones category. So moving on to our final tab here, automatic filtering and boosting settings. What we wanted to highlight here is that although it's great having AI involved for the automation of uh, manual work, ultimately you do have control over how you want it to be used. And our dashboard crucially gives you that control based on the confidence level which the QCAT model generates. So this settings tab really is where you can decide as a user which categories you believe should be automatically boosted automatically filtered or nothing happens at all. So for this particular demo app, the green represents boosting and the blue represents filtering. So we've decided that the high level of confidence generated by our AI model, we will boost those results belonging to that category prediction. But for the very high and the certain level of confidence, we're gonna, we're gonna filter down to those results. So going back to the Predictions Explorer here, you will notice that for the query iPhone, coming over to the right-hand side here again, our confidence level is certain, therefore we're gonna filter it down to that category. One other thing to add here on this page is that you can, it, there is an exclusion list here. So you can force disable uh, some queries for uh, category prediction. Okay, so. Now I believe that you're all QCAT experts and, and gurus. I think you're now ready to introduce you to the uh, shiny part of the demo, our demo store. So if you recall, um, I asked you to bank or remember the technical uh, jargon, the search API response. Well, this is that section now. This is really where QCAT's ability to access these category predictions at query time comes in based on that toggle setting. But I just want us to take a step back from a higher level. Understanding the intent behind a search is a uh, complex process that requires machine learning algorithms. Not only uh, not everyone can afford these the time and the effort that it represents, but with QCAT, what if you could show directly to your users what category our models believe your queries belong to? We can do that as they type. And with QCAT, the benefit um, is that it's just working away in the background with no extra uh, business or developer work required. As you have this action uh, access to this information while the user types from the search API response, you can provide a customized and tailored search ex and discover experience for your users with increased search precision, precision let me get that right, uh, reducing the time that it takes to find relevant items. So to demonstrate, we're going to use this demo saw, uh, store. I promised shininess, and here it is, ta-da. Um, we're going to type in the query iPhone case. But before I do that, let me show you, let me tell you that this is a marketplace where there are products like sports equipment, groceries, electronics. So there's all sorts of uh, different kind of um, products that we that we sell here. So I'm going to type in the query iPhone case now. You'll see for this site experience, for this demo, we've made a multifaceted autocomplete drop down with um, recent searches, popular searches, and products. But what we've done with QCAT is that we've made this extra bit of UI which says best results in, and it's suggesting the category which the QCAT model is certain that the query iPhone case belongs to. So what this, this is kind of clear, and this is the way that we've decided to do it. Um, you can do it in, in any kind of way that you would like. 
Um, but really what we're saying here is that based on how users search your site, our AI model is confident that the iPhone case query is going to belong to this basic cases category. Therefore, we're showing uh, an understanding of the user intent and then guiding them here by providing an option to click through to the filtered category. So once you click on here, you'll see that the category is added to the search bar. Then what we can do is hit enter and click through to the search results page, which has this filter automatically applied. You can turn this filter off and you can clear this to search for other products and the user can continue their journey by further refining their search. So let's suppose it's payday. Uh, I know payday doesn't happen every day, but suppose we have a little bit of extra cash and we wanted to go for an iPhone with our uh, iPhone case. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start taking away the, um, the, qu the query case. Um, we're gonna go back to iPhone. You can see here that the QCAT has um, predicted the category of cell phones for best results in. So let's go through and do the same procedure, click through to there. You'll see that it is filtered down to the cell phones category. So, so far we've had um, kind of, you know, fairly specific kind of uh, queries, specific and narrow type queries where we, we're kind of understanding what the user's typing in. But another kind of key part of QCAT is to make a distinction between category predictions. So for example, when a user's query could be ambiguous, um, let's say that searching for uh, iPhones and iPhone cases has, has made us thirsty. I don't know. Um, we go to the to the search bar, we'll type in milk. And what you can see here is that, hey presto, we have kind of two category predictions here. Uh, we've got the grocery uh, and gourmet food category and the personal care. So just clicking through these, you, even in the autocomplete, you can see that these results are going to be kind of milk and auto, uh, milk and, um, and oat milk. Um, products and then clicking back if we click through to personal care then we're seeing more kind of beauty products coconut milk uh, ice cream land of milk and honey these kind of these kind of products and really QCAT is having kind of two main points of impact here firstly it's guiding the user towards the products that they may be looking for and cutting down that um, interaction cost if you're unfamiliar with the term interaction costs, it's essentially the uh, amount of clicks that it takes for a user to get through to what they want to see. And of course, the most important bit, getting them through to the cart and through that, that paying funnel. Secondly, it's uh, showing an understanding of the user intent, which is really giving confidence back to the user with a, with a, with a smooth and guided search experience. Okay, so... Let's just imagine that we've got some milk left and uh, that we're a little bit hungry after doing all, all this searching. Um, and we want something sweet and we want like vanilla in it. So I'm going to type in vanilla. Um, and this is giving us two category suggestions. Firstly, single herbs and spices. So we click through here. This looks like you could make some lovely uh, homemade ice cream with some with some vanilla pods. And if we go back to the search bar, we type in extracts. We click through to the search results. Here, this is obviously more vanilla extract of which you can, um, yeah, bake a lovely cake. Okay, let's go through to our last example here today. Let's look for face mask. Now, face mask is giving us a one category prediction in treatments and masks. And this really makes sense because the products that we sell are mainly kind of health products, health and, be health and beauty products. But... Let's say, for example, that uh, we've just started selling a line of clothed face masks, you know, like um, uh, hygienic masks for, for things that we had you know, during COVID, um, but that we've only just put them up, so we have no events on them, no clicks and conversions on, it, on them, but we want to have a category prediction available. This is entirely plausible. Let's go back home here to Predictions Explorer. Um, let's get rid of that and type in face mask. Let's go through to that category prediction. Now, here, you're on the right hand side, you will find an edit button, which you can edit the predicted categories for. So this is the one that QCAT automatically made, but we can add a category. So here, we're going to add health and household, I believe it is. Um, and then the next level is going to be medical supplies and equipment. And then the next one, there we go, cloth and face marks and accessories. Next, you will need to decide on the confidence level for that category. So we're not going to go too aggressive today. We'll just go with a boost. So let's say it's going to be a high confidence. So we'll select high. 
Once you've clicked this blue button here, then QCAT will work in the background to make that category prediction for you. Okay. So the shininess is over, unfortunately, but while it's all great having these options to configure in the dashboard and, 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 the, and for the front end, it's also really important to work out what impact QCAT is actually having for you. And for that, you can easily um, and quickly start an A-B test from the QCAT dashboard just here. You'll notice that it's grayed out here, and that kind of makes sense because when we do an A-B test, the variant A will not have auto filtering and boosting enabled, but the variant B will have that. So you will have to disable that first before you launch an A-B test. And really here, this is just to kind of make your um, find out the value that, that QCAT is bringing for you by, by doing an A-B test straight from the QCAT dashboard. So there you have it. The ins and outs of query categorization. Thanks for watching. To learn more, don't hesitate to reach out to the team.